Hi, Mike Kiko here with your options web extra on open interest. So another volatile day, unsurprisingly, with what's going on between Russia and Ukraine. And we might as well pick up right there with the Russian ETF. We talked about this yesterday. We saw a whole lot of put buying. It was the 19 strike puts, and it actually got down to about that level today. So the buyer of those puts saw big profits. We saw well above average volumes as this thing declined at one point about 10%. Interestingly though, one of the things that we did see was a purchase of the April 25 calls, over 38,000 or so of those were trading for about 50 cents. Buyers of those calls might be looking to risk a little bit of premium that at some point we might begin to see some clarity and a bit of a rebound here in RSX. But there were other areas that did see some bearish activity. I'm speaking now about EWT. This is the Taiwan ETF. This one saw big bearish activity. I think it traded uh, something like 43 times its average daily put volume. There, the activity was the April 6055 put spread. We saw 9,000 of those trade as a block and actually the total volume was considerably more looking for a downside move somewhere in the vicinity of uh, you know, call it $9 or so. That would be a 15% decline if it went down to that, that lower put strike. Now, also sort of in the macro space, we were seeing a lot of activity in wheat, W-E-A-T. This was the ETF that Carter and I discussed back on the 11th, and we noted that we were seeing a lot of bullish activity there. Wheat is up about 12% in just the last four trading days. And what we were seeing today in terms of options on the wheat ETF was more bullish activity purchases of the May 10 calls. Those were trading for uh, 13 cents. That may not sound like a lot, but remember, of course, this ETF is under $10 a share. So 13 cents represents about one and a half percent of the current price. And it would require a decent move to the upside for those to be profitable uh, by March expiration. Moving on and kind of related to agriculture, we were looking at Mosaic. Now, the interesting thing about Mosaic, this is a fertilizer company. They reported earnings. Some aspects of earnings were a little bit disappointing here. It traded two times average daily options volume, but one of the areas where they came up short, despite the fact that revenues grew considerably to about 3.84 billion from about 2.46 a year prior, is that that was under the street's estimate of about 3.93 billion. The company did announce that they were raising the dividend to 60 cents a share from 45 cents a share. Now, if we take a look at the options activity, what we saw was kind of interesting. It was a big purchase of the June 44 puts. It was tied to stock though. And when you tie a purchase of puts to the purchase of stock, you end up with something that looks a lot like a straddle. This is a bet on volatility. This is a bet that volatility continues through June. The company themselves announced that they thought that the disruptions between Russia and Ukraine could have big impacts on the fertilizer market and potash in particular. This may be betting on a lot of volatility in this area generally over the course of the next several months as we, again, are looking for some clarity going on. Now, moving on to some names that were a little bit less related to that, but did have earnings. Nevertheless, we were looking at Springworks Therapeutics. Uh, this is a, a name that saw a lot of activity. Now it has earnings coming up and yet the stock moved very, very sharply today. We're trying to look for what the potential catalyst for that move of down about 11% that we were seeing when I was looking at this around midday. We did see a big risk reversal trade, specifically somebody was selling the May 40 puts, buying the May 65 calls. Doing that trade essentially would compel the trader to be long at that lower put strike, because they could have the stock put to them, that would be about a nine and a half dollar uh, decline from the current stock price. Or alternatively, if the stock rallies, they would have the option to purchase it at 65. So in between those two strikes, they don't have a whole lot of exposure, but it is basically you have an upside move on a breakout, you can participate and you don't actually take risk to the downside unless the stock declines in this case, about 20%. Another name we were seeing a lot of activity was Open Door Technologies. Uh, so this is a real estate technology uh, company. One of the things that we saw here, this is a, a company that has really performed very, very badly uh, over the course of this year, actually today, this year, 
and uh, going back even 52 weeks. It's, it's down nearly 70% over the past year, and they are going to be reporting earnings. It does seem like somebody might be playing for a little bit of a bounce, potentially. We saw a big purchase of some out-of-the-money March calls here, potentially risking as a relatively small amount of money on a, on a big bounce. Now, I would quickly point out that uh, right now, revenue estimates for it are about 3.34 uh, billion. EBITDA estimates are for only 6.94 million, and the street is actually expecting a net loss of about 44 million. So when earnings come out, take a look at those numbers and see how they stack up to the street's estimates. Okay, moving on, Foot Locker, another one that saw a lot of activity. Uh, this is a name also that has not been performing particularly well of late. Uh, we have seen a lot of the ratings and price targets getting cut. Now, if we take a look at retail sales of shoes generally, this quarter they actually have been boosted pretty considerably by about 21%, but Foot Locker, the street's only looking for an increase of a little over 6% in sales. So they're looking for it to trail essentially some of the comps in this area. They're going to be reporting before the open on the 25th. What we saw here was a big put spread collar. So what that means is somebody who likely holds the shares was buying the February 40, 35 put spread and helping to finance that purchase by selling the 45 calls. Now what this would do would give the holder of those shares some protection from $40, which is approximately where the stock closed, down to 35. So more than 10% protection to the downside, but still give them some participation of about $5 to the upside. I would point out that although a lot of sell side analysts have been getting increasingly negative, according to their most recent 13F, so this is the one that was from December 31st of last year, one of the hedge funds that has been acquiring the stock recently is David Tepper's Appaloosa. I think they were acquired just under 170,000 shares, according to that 13F. Now, this block of um, options would represent 400,000 shares. So I'm not saying it's Appaloosa that did it. Perhaps they acquired more stock. Perhaps this is another holder. But this options trade, although giving some protection through earnings, is very likely against a long stock position. So somebody basically trying to give themselves some near side uh, participation to the upside with a little bit of a downside buffer, given the recent weakness. Uh, so another name we were seeing some activity, Kutera. Uh, this one, not a name that we talk about all that often. Uh, it was another risk reversal, actually. So we were seeing a sale of uh, the September 30 puts and a purchase of the September 40 calls. Uh, you will notice that the 40 call strike is actually closer to the current stock price. So the stock would need to rally about $4. Now, bear in mind, because this one expires out in September, it will behave a little bit like stock between those strikes. Once, of course, the stock goes either above that 40 strike call or below the 30 strike put, it's going to behave a lot more like stock. The delta of this position is going to rise. This is a name that has uh, you know, not a whole lot of sell side coverage, but those that do cover it are all uh, quite favorable on it. Right now, I think the average analyst price target of the five analysts who covered all with buy ratings is about 75% higher than the current stock price. Uh, moving on to another area, we have Teladoc. Now, Teladoc is a name that actually has gotten a lot of play recently. And one of the reasons is that ARC, uh, Kathy Wood's ETF is actually its largest shareholder. Uh, this is a name that really hasn't uh, been performing particularly well uh, recently. So right now we're looking at a quarter one adjusted EBITDA forecast of about 51 to $55 million. Uh, that is well below the, the 78 million consensus that uh, the street had before earnings. Also, after we got these results, JP Morgan cut their price target to $125. To put things in perspective, you might think, well, $125, not bad, because that is actually more than double today's closing stock price. But their prior target was actually 208. And we've seen the price targets uh, steadily declining. So right now, the full year EBITDA guidance is probably a little bit lower than the street was expecting. I think the street was looking for about 351 um, million for the full year in terms of EBITDA. That's towards the upper end of what the company is now guiding net of this most recent earnings. 
the activity that we saw, we saw a buyer of uh, 500 of the January 55 puts. They were selling 500 of the uh, January, those are the 90 calls, excuse me. And uh, also that's probably against stock. My guess is this is a, is a collar. So essentially looking for some downside protection if the weakness that we've been seeing in Teladoc uh, should continue. Lowe's reported earnings as well. And this is a stock that hasn't been doing particularly well of late. The street actually responded pretty favorably right after they reported earnings. The stock actually was higher. And I think this price that we're looking at here might be a little bit stale. I think it closed flat on the day. We did see good same store sales increases. Uh, and we also saw better margins, better inventory management uh, generally. What's interesting to me is when we compare Lowe's to Home Depot, because Home Depot uh, is usually uh, the company that trades at a higher valuation. It does trade at a higher valuation now, but during this pandemic period, it seems like Lowe's has been outperforming them. I think right now Home Depot is probably trading around 19 times earnings and Lowe's right around 60 times earnings. One of the metrics that people like to look at between these two and a benefit that they typically assign to Home Depot is that they have a higher percentage of their sales going to professionals, about 40% of their sales. Now, I would say that Lowe's indicated on their earnings call that they saw about a 23% increase in their sales to professionals, but that still leaves them trailing Home Depot considerably. Also, Home Depot historically has had significantly higher sales per square foot. We did see some good size bullish activity in Home Depot in the options market. We saw a buy of about 1,200 of the uh, March 355 calls. And those were trading for just about uh, 51 cents. Uh, and then finally, we are taking a look at FANG. This is Diamondback Energy. This company is operating uh, principally in the Permian. This is a company that has uh, historically indicated that they were going to give at least 50% of their free cash flow back to shareholders, either in the form of dividends or share buybacks. Now, uh, most recently, they completed their share buyback program. They purchased uh, about 3.8 million shares. They are continuing to commit to that 50% return of free cash flow to shareholders. Part of that is also increasing the dividend by about 20% to $2.40 uh, cents a share. We did see some big bullish activity in here. We saw a purchase of 4,500 of the January 2023 140, 180 call spreads. The buyer of those call spreads obviously making a levered bet to the upside. Now I would point out that the person who did this was actually rolling out of a prior bullish bet. They had already owned some upside calls. Those are now in the money. They're taking those profits and essentially redeploying them to higher strikes. I'm Mike Coe. If you like this kind of content, follow me on Twitter at Michael underscore Co. Please be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will be updated as soon as we create new videos. We really appreciate your time and attention. Thanks for watching. If you liked the content, please consider subscribing to the Open Interest YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash open interest. And of course, you can also follow or tweet me at Michael underscore Co or go to our website, www.openinterest.pro. Thanks for watching.